Back in 2016, Deadpool proved that an R-rated comic book movie could be a major box office hit. Two years later, Black Panther broke records, demonstrating the wide appeal of a black superhero. 20 years before either of those films, Blade did both. It's not that people have forgotten about Wesley Snipes' vampire actioner. Blade simply existed in a different era, one that wasn't inundated with costumed Avengers fighting evil on the big screen. However, being so removed from the current roster of comic adaptations, the 1998 blockbuster is arguably directly responsible for it. You're one of them, aren't you? No. I'm something else. Prior to the film, Blade wasn't a massively popular character. In the early days, he was something of a cliché. He had an afro, there was a forced connection to jazz, he joined gangs, and spoke in what today would likely be considered offensive ebonics. Early development aimed at making Blade a spoof. Enter David S. Goyer, a relative newcomer with a nerd on for comics. Goyer had a different vision, a straight version that played up the inherently rich potential of the source material. Goyer envisioned a fully established reality, coinciding with our own, separated by its own set of rules and compelling characters. This same approach brought the writer to what many consider the modern epic of superhero cinema, Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight series. Goyer would go on to pen Batman Begins and be credited with the story of both sequels. Goyer's vision of Blade was the first to demonstrate that the magazines in kids' hands contained stories and characters worth taking seriously. Fox learned that lesson well with X-Men, which finally entered production just a few months after Blade hit theaters. Director Brian Singer and screenwriter Tom DeSanto did one thing differently than James Cameron and Josh Whedon, who had both previously attempted adaptations. They took the world and the characters of X-Men seriously. Blade and X-Men both tackled the topics of discrimination, and even had a similar storyline between Deacon Frost and Magneto. Humans are less than us, so let's assert our dominance by making them more like vampires and mutants. The films had the same balance of unique action and quippy humor, even if one delivers a more blood-soaked version. There are a lot of reasons why Blade worked, from the kinetic fight scenes to the spot on casting and a fresh storytelling style brought in by director Stephen Norrington. Blade was able to break out of a mold of superhero films that no other movie had been able to do up to that point. Blade isn't a perfect film, but it succeeded where so many others failed, and its success has led studios to finally believe that the world of comics can and should be taken seriously. A decade after Blade, he had an Oscar-winning superhero movie, The Dark Knight, and another 10 years after that, a record-shattering black hero. But before either of those, there had to be Blade. <laughs>